Hi everyone in my church family in Canley. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Danny. Uh, I'm grateful to be able to speak to you again this hour. Uh, today we'll be looking at uh, the time of transition when Elijah finally passes on the role of God's mouthpiece to the new prophet Elisha. Uh, in many ways, this period today is a huge time of transition. Um, the church, we cannot meet in person and we wonder how things will turn out in the future. Um, so when I read this passage, um, it, spoke, it spoke a lot to me and I hope that um, through this passage, God will speak to us, reassure us and encourage us to press on in our current situation. Um, so uh, let's start with um, talking a bit about how I, the time that I arrived in England. As some of you may know, I am an international student at work and I'm from the island of Mauritius near Africa. That's pretty far away. Uh, and when I came to England, I was so nervous because I knew I wouldn't have my family around to back me up. I would need to fend for myself and make my own way through society. I would ask myself sometimes, where could I find support when things aren't going well? I think this would be similar to how Elisha felt when he realized his mentor Elijah was leaving him. In our first reading, we learnt how Elisha dropped everything to follow God's calling. Uh, in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 20, we read, Elisha then left his oxen and ran after Elijah. Let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, he said, and then I will come with you. So Elisha dropped everything. He sold his oxen and um, gave, shared, shared the money with um, his villagers. Um, and then joined Elijah, um, and Elijah was his only his only help through the next seven years. Um, for the Eli for the next seven years, Elisha accompanied Elijah as the latter fought to bring Israel back to worship of the true God. Uh, and last week, for example, we heard how God condemned Ahab, king of Israel, for murder and theft, using Elijah as his primary mouthpiece. Elijah was the greatest prophet of his time. He was zealous for God and he faced many trials. So imagine the tension that Elisha felt when he realized God was going to take Elijah away. Um, Elisha, Elisha had dropped everything for Elijah. Uh, what was he going to do now? Will he be good enough to keep up Elijah's ministry? Or will he fail without Elijah to guide him? So yeah, so we can imagine how moody he felt when other prophets reminded him that Elijah was going to leave not once but twice so in in 2 kings chapter 2 verse 3 we read the company of the prophets at bethel came out to Eli to elisha and asked do you know that the lord is going to take your master from you today yes i know Eli elisha replied so be quiet <laughs> i'm always amused at these small snippets of emotion that we find in the bible it reminds me that these people were ordinary like us um, with the same worries and struggles in everyday life uh, so Elisha was stressed, um, yet he stuck with Elijah till the very end, telling him, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. His dedication is rewarded when he is able to see Elijah be taken up to heaven by a chariot of fire. Um, the Bible tells us that just by seeing Elijah in this way, Elijah's spirit was passed down to Elisha. Um, but now... With Elijah gone, now is the moment of truth. Elisha is all alone, and there is the huge task of ministering to Israel lays before him. He's going to have to go to confront kings and crowds and suffer hardships all by himself. Or is, or is he by himself? Because as soon as Elijah is gone, Elisha asks this remarkable question. Where now is the Lord, the God of Elijah? Elijah had been filled with God's power to perform miracles. Um, let's, uh, El Elisha remembers that it was God who set fire to the altar to shame the prophets of Baal. It was God who brought judgment on Ahab, fulfilling the prophecy that Elijah made against the king. So Elisha, rather than moping that his only support on earth was gone, he went to God, who was always there, the God of his mentor Elijah. God hears Elisha's plea, and grants him the same power that he granted to Elijah. And Elisha grant, uh, strikes the Jordan River with Elijah's cloak, and the waters miraculously separate, leaving a path. 
Um, and this is obviously the same miracle that um, Moses achieved with God's help and Elijah achieved with God's help. And now Elisha is the one who did it. Um, because it's not, it's not the prophets who are special, um, but it's the almighty God that they served. Um, the same God we have today. Uh, God reveals to Elisha that he is not alone in this task. And now Elisha, God's new prophet, he gains the confidence to set out to help Israel. Um, isn't this an epic story? Uh, but we are, we are in the present day. Um, and this might feel like an event from very long ago um, that is hard to make relevant today. Um, but we can learn from this because for me, just as Elisha depended on Elijah for support, I found comfort in the church. So when I got to the UK alone, the first thing I looked for was a new family. And I was pleasantly surprised to find there were many Christians in church and in Christian Union who took care of me and gave me food. Um, Sundays became true rest days as I could spend time with people I loved. We encouraged each other and pointed each other to the love of Father God and the Lord Jesus. But in the last months with COVID, I have been struggling a lot and many of you will feel the same. Um, since we cannot meet in person anymore, I find it hard to encourage each other. Um, and I'll share with you very honestly that I have been forgetting God more and more during lockdown. But this passage reminded me, and I hope that it reminds you, that these times of transition are not without hope. When I feel like I have no earthly support, um, I remember that God is always with me. Uh, the God who didn't abandon Eli Elisha is the same God that we worship now, um, and God will never abandon us either. So let us cling to God and ask ourselves, where is the Lord? And God will surely answer our prayers. God proved it to Elisha when he was able to perform the same miracles that Elijah had. To us, God can reveal, to, can reveal himself to us through a miracle. They still do happen. Um, but it could also be through other Christians checking that you're okay. And one way or another, God will reassure us that he is, that we are not without support, that he is still in charge, um, that we are not alone um, to fend for ourselves in this crisis. <clears throat> um, even if we are still unsure where God is, we do already have the evidence of God's love, recorded especially for us. We know from the Bible that God sent Jesus in real life, in real history, to die for our sins and save us. I, 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 find, it, I find it hard that without communion, um, I am not reminded. I, the communion gives me a reminder that Jesus died for us. Um, and that is the greatest act of love that you can ever think of. Um, so, which is one of the reasons I struggle when there isn't a physical church. Um, but yes, uh, so, yes, so Jesus did come and die for us. Um, it was recorded by multiple people so we can trust the accounts. And God also used countless prophecies throughout the Old Testament that come true in Jesus, giving us more confidence that Jesus is actually who he said he was, God himself. Um, so let us be reminded today that God is there for us, even when the times change and the church must take on a different form. Um, the, uh, so yeah, so there's another time of transition maybe that I should mention. Um, a time of transition in the Bible, which is very similar to this one, so, and that is when the disciples were left on earth when after Jesus left, um, and uh, and the disciples um, were very scared because Jesus was um, their only support during that time. And when Jesus left, Jesus t reassured them by um, saying that when He's gone, there will be a helper that will come to with, that will come into each and every Christian, and that is the Holy Spirit. Um, just as just like Elijah's spirit passed on passed down to Elisha, so we have the Holy Spirit in us now as Christians, even so far after uh, Jesus has left. Um, and this Holy Spirit is going to help us uh, have the energy to keep fighting, to keep trying to do good in the world, um, and tell other people about Jesus. Um, I admit that's quite hard during lockdown. Uh, I've struggled because. 
uh, I'm not sure how I can tell people about Jesus um, when you have to just, you have to stay away from the other people. Um, but uh, I was also reminded that um, we do the best that we can, and during this crisis, let's at least, at the very least, keep an eye out for each other. So um, this week, I'll challenge you to try to reconnect with someone in the church um, because that has been that has been a blessing for me. Um, and let's try to be a blessing to each other. So try and set up a call with um, someone else in the church um, to see how each other is doing and to pray to pray with each other. You only have to. It doesn't have to be a big prayer. Just have to pray. Let's just pray that the situation will improve. Um, and be reminded that uh, God is still there, and that um, things will things will get better. <clears throat> uh, yes. So that's everything from me, and uh, I hope to see you all soon, um, whether online or in real life. Thank you.